Well, good morning, everyone. Today, we are going to one of the food pantries where they have some food that they don't want. So we're gonna go, we're gonna pick it up. Today, I'm gonna share with you a little bit about all kinds of things about why I do this. What is the reasoning behind it? It's a hot day today. Let's get started. Woohoo! Now, I'm not going to film it. I'm not going to film it inside because of respect for people, but I will take you with me. Yeah, I go by myself. Now, it's only, it's not that far from where I live. But I've gotten real good at driving myself to places I need to go. Hubby's working and my daughter probably isn't even awake yet. She likes to sleep in. So here we go. So I thought I'll share with you a little bit. Why do I do this? What is my reasoning? I know most of you understand why I do something like this, but a lot of you don't understand it. i get back to you in a little bit when I'm on the country roads because I have to concentrate right now. So I'll get back to you in a little bit. So why do I do this? Well, as you all know, I am a prepper. And so a prepper is somebody who preps for no matter what happens in life. A uh, job loss, you can prep for, you know, if there's famine, you can prep for, you know, the state of the world that we're living in. You can prep for natural disasters. And you know, I don't talk a lot on my channel about what I feel about what's happening in the future, but I do believe that this is just the start of some things that could happen. And that doesn't mean we be afraid or we walk around in panic and things like that. We don't hoard up on toilet paper. My goodness, that's awful. But it means that we do take an account of things. I have been blessed to have this resource at my hands because I'm the one who will come and get it. So many times people say, oh, I wanna do this and I wanna do that. They have reached out to other people and they don't show up. They don't, they don't come for it. They don't, they don't take care of it. They say they're gonna come and they never show up. The minute they call me, the minute I'm aware of it, I go. I pick it up and they're right on the dot. I don't, I'm not late. I'm right on the dot because I want it and I wanna use it and I'm thankful for it. All right. I'm going to be making a small batch of stuffed peppers. It's really simple. So we have about a pound and a half of ground beef. We're going to add a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. We're going to add a half of an onion, one egg, And we're gonna add one cup of rice. We're gonna go ahead and mix this up. And add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, just a little bit. And we're gonna mix it all up real well. Take our peppers and we're going to stuff them real full. We want to make sure we stuff them real well. Oh, and that is stuffed peppers. We're going to go ahead and bake this at 350 degrees until finished and it'll be about one hour. I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Now I still have a lot of meat left. I'm going to go ahead and see if I have more peppers. If not, then I'm going to make meatballs with these. Now with the rest of the meat, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to make meatballs with them. So basically all we're doing is taking the same meat and we're just shaping it into meatballs. When you add breadcrumbs and you add rice, it really stretches your ground beef. And in this time that we're living in, 
ground beef is extremely expensive. Now we're going to have mashed potatoes with this. All right, and here's our meal, and it looks amazing. Yum, yum. So while I was working on my stuffed peppers, I looked in my refrigerator, and I realized I have all these carrots left. And about four weeks ago, I decided to pickle the carrots, and I opened them up today, and they were absolutely amazing. Now, I cheated a little bit because I do use Mrs. Wages. But let me tell you, these are amazing. Now, I'm not going to can them. In fact, I don't can any of my pickles or anything I use with Mrs. Wages. It actually lasts a whole year in the refrigerator. But these pickled carrots are the most amazing tasting things you'll ever eat. So the pickling is not just for cucumbers. You can actually pickle green beans and carrots, and it is so good. So I just want to share with that, that little tip with all of you. And I also have a video on where we're actually pickling a whole bunch of vegetables, a whole assortment of them. But this time we're just doing some carrots. You want to make sure you get the brine over top of all of the carrots. And Mrs. Dill's pickle mix, she has different ones. So this is the Polish dill. And then you have the kosher dill. They're all really, really good. So you can reuse the brine if you want to. So after these are finished, you can go ahead and save the brine and you can put new carrots in it. You can can it if you want, but there's no need to can it. You can just put it in your refrigerator and it will last you at least a year because I have some that I did last year. We finished them up last week and they are so good. Just another tip from my house to yours. I noticed I don't have as many chickens anymore. I did have one pass away. As most of you know, I let my chickens live the rest of their life here. I don't slaughter chickens. And I gave some to my grandchildren. So in the spring, we're gonna have a whole new flock. But let's see, it always scares me when I'm missing one. Oh, there she is, she's laying her egg. All right, we'll let her alone. I'll be quiet for just a moment so you can hear the sounds of my homestead. All my herbs. This is going to go into some of my soaps this winter. We have calendula, we have, and rose, and lemon verbena, thyme, mint, comfrey, 
yarrow, hydrangeas, chamomile, oregano, everything. This is one of the most favorite things I love to do is working with herbs.